All right, it is time for my six month review of the Dell G5 15 5590 special edition with an i7 six core 2060 uh, 512 gig RAM SSD. Now, we've, we've done a couple videos about this. We upgraded it, we had two terabytes of 2.5 inch SSD, and we also did a thermal repaste on it. If you want to catch that video, it'll be up here somewhere. Um, you should watch it. Uh, so that you know how to do it. It's, it's nice to learn these things um, so that you can go ahead and, and work on your own stuff. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hop in and we're going to talk about my impressions after six months. And so instead of just having one week with a product, I'm bringing six months of, of knowledge at you um, to, really, to really give it a good, good, thorough review. So let's go ahead and let's hop on in. All right, so first let's talk about what I, what I did with this. So with the Dell G5, the 5590, uh, it is a gaming laptop. However, I used it as a desktop replacement um, during the past six months. I used it as a desktop replacement for about uh, half of that time. And then as the other part of that time, I used it for three months um, as my main daily driver laptop that I would use whenever I went places for work or whenever I was wanting to play games uh, downstairs on the couch while my wife watched Heart of Dixie or something. And so I tried to give it a really good, good thorough usage in different scenarios. And so I think I got some pretty good, some pretty good uh, information about it, hopefully. So I tried to use it in a wide range of scenarios. I really wanted to do the best that I could with this review. Um, take my time with it and, and really spend some time with this and give it an overall impression and conclusion at the very end. So we're going to hop in, we're going to talk about uh, performance, what I think about the build quality, and then we'll talk about um, uh, the conclusion at the end. And so let's go ahead and let's, let's set it up and let's talk about the actual unit itself. All right, so here we are. We're, we're back at looking at the laptop itself. I've got it on uh, a cooling pad, which you have to have on one of these, unfortunately. And so let's talk about the build quality. Now, it's plastic all the way around it up top, on the bottom. Um, this top right here at the top is a little bit of aluminum, I believe is what the material is. It does have a little bit of flex. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but it does have a little bit of flex in the keyboard itself, um, it does have blue black backlighting. It's got a number key over here, you know, full size number key. The trackpad is offset, so it's not in the center. Um, as you can see, it's not in the center here. It's a little bit offset, it's, you know, it's small, but it, it's decent, it does the job. Uh, you'd wanna use the mouse with this anyways. The keyboard itself, um, the, it's actually really nice. So, I mean, topping on it, um, it's a, not a bad typing experience, so if you're taking notes for school or coding or doing something for work, it's really not that bad of a keyboard. It's a lot better than the MacBook, MacBook Pro 2016, or the 16 inch MacBook Pro. I can tell you that. So, the keyboard, it's not bad. The, the lighting isn't bad as, as, all, as, as well. Um, so, overall, not bad. For the keyboard, the construction on the keyboard, there's, like I said, there's a little bit of flex, there's not a whole lot, but it's not bad. So let's move on to the screen. All right, so the screen, this is 1080p. Uh, it is 144 hertz, so that's pretty nice. Um, it's 300 nit peak brightness, peak brightness at 144 hertz. Whenever you go below 144 hertz, the brightness is lower for some reason, um, but it is what it is, but it is 144 hertz. There is quite a bit of flex in the monitor itself uh, or the screen portion. There, I mean, there is a lot of flex. I don't know if you can see that. Um, there's quite a bit of flex. The hinge on it, not bad. You can open it with one hand. So that's pretty cool. Like I said, it's, it's a little bit flexy. You know, it's flexible. It does yoga. As far as colors and everything go, it's okay. I mean, it's a TM panel. It's not going to have the best color reproduction. It's not bad to work on for 
periods of time. I wouldn't do it for a long period of time. I wouldn't do any graphical work on it. I have done video editing on it. Um, what I did notice though from the videos that I did edit on it was the colors whenever you viewed on a better screen after rendering and everything, um, the colors weren't as, as good as what they would, should be expected. And so it didn't turn out very well when actually doing content creation on it. However, it will, it will do um, content creation. There is enough power behind it. And so it's got ports galore on it. On the side, it's got a USB. It's got a microphone jack there, USB 3, USB C. On the other side, it's got an SD card reader, which comes in handy. Another USB 3. On the rear, it has the power. It takes a 180 watt power brick, I believe. Um, on the back though, you've got mini display port, USB 3, HDMI, Ethernet, Kensington lock, and the power adapter, or the, pow the spot for the power adapter. Uh, as far as weight goes, I think it's like five, five and a half pounds, something like that. It's okay. It's not, it's not light by any means, any stretch of the imagination. So let's go ahead and let's look at some game performance. All right, so here we are inside a Jedi Fallen Order. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn the screen brightness up on this so that y'all can see. Uh, it doesn't get super bright, that's as bright as it gets. So let's look at the settings here for visuals. Motion blur, stupid, let's turn it off. Um, it's on full screen. I don't know why I wanted to start in some weird. <clears throat> yeah, we'll accept it. All right. So on 1920 by 1080 uh, settings at Epic, we are getting, looks like about 83 um, FPS. It's been a while since I played this game. I forgot how to do it. That was not how you do it. There we go. So, yep, there we go. Frame dip. Pretty massive one. So we're sitting at about 77 now. You know, ooh, it looks so pretty. I'm trying to find something to fight. We're at 83 now. Okay. Ninety. I think y'all get the point. About seventy to eighty with some frame dips in Jedi Fallen Order at um, max settings. So I'm gonna let y'all hear what it sounds like as far as the fan noise. Hopefully y'all can hear this. So it can be a little bit loud. Let's go ahead and put in another game. All right, so here we are inside of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Let's go ahead and look at the settings here. Make sure that we're set and pretty. Settings, options. So we're on ultra high, it looks like. Our graphics quality is custom. Um, so we've got ultra high shadows, high on, and very high on everything else. Okay. So you should be able to see what it looks like up there in the top right corner. It's running at about 60, 59, something like that. Here's a quest um, by this person. No, I don't want to help you. Uh, let's go down here and get in a fight. Right, this person doesn't know that I'm here, but they're about to. All right, I'm gonna go up here. Say good night, doggy. Yeah, get wrecked. Give me the marrows, scrub. 
So we're hanging out around 60, 61, 62. So I mean, it's playable with pretty good settings. I, I don't know if y'all can tell how good it looks or anything, but I mean, it doesn't look bad by any means necessary. Beat you with my, my stuff here. You wanna get torched, bro? Shoot you right in the face. Do you want some? Homie don't care. I'm a master. The best. Whoa. Might be able to see it a little bit better now. Destroy everything. And run. So as you can see, I mean, it's not a bad gaming experience. Um, there wasn't any large frame dips. It went between 50 and 60, give or take. Something like that. So. All right, conclusion time. So let's talk about my conclusion of the Dell G5 5590. So what is it? Desktop replacement, laptop. It's sure not an ultra book. Uh, what it is, is it's something that does uh, several things decently, but nothing really well, if that makes sense. Uh, it's got 144 hertz screen, so if you're playing something like League of Legends, Overwatch, CSGO, you can take advantage of that. So it does have the horsepower to do that. As you've seen, um, you can play Star Wars and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. You can get 60 to 80 frames. Uh, on ultra high settings or high settings, you know, very close to being ultra high. So that's good. Uh, if you're looking for a, a gaming laptop, it does that quite well. Um, but what it is that I really feel about this thing is it's hard to say. It's, it's not really something that you want to pick up and go, but it's, it's not a desktop. It's not a desktop. It's not an ultra book. Uh, what is it? It's a mobile desktop. That's really what it is. It's, it's heavy. The power brick is heavy. So altogether, you're looking at about nine pounds to carry this thing around. Um, if just with the laptop and the power brick, you, you need a cooling pad. It's not something that you can go down and sit on your couch with and you know hammer out work or anything on um, because it, it does get very hot. And so you want a cooling pad. Um, we talked about content creation earlier. The screen's not good enough to do con content creation. It's just not there in terms of the reproducible colors, you know, and, and being able to do quality work. It's just not there. Uh, I wish it was, but, but it's not. Now, whenever you edit videos or go to render them, um, like in Adobe Premiere Pro, you can edit a 45 minute video in under 10 minutes. And so it's very good at that if you're wanting to export videos. Now, if you had an external screen, like I do, um, you know, using something like an ASUS ProArt or, you know, 4K display or something like that, and you want to do content creation on it, then you're in business. I mean, we're talking, you can pump out some videos very quickly. It, it, it does have that horsepower to it. And so through the past six months of using this, it's not something that I wanted to carry around with me, like I've mentioned. And so I really didn't like using it for anything other than playing World of Warcraft on a couch while my wife watched, you know, Heart of Dixie or something. Uh, it's not, I didn't want to carry it around and write papers on it. I took it to a couple business meetings and even with the performance set all the way down to preserve battery life, the fans would still kick on and you're in the middle of a business meeting and it's like, you know, going, just going as hard as it can. And people's looking at you like, 
dude, what is going on? You know, your laptop is disrupting our meeting because it sounds like there's a jet engine flying across the table. And so that's really not cool. Um, or if you're taking it on the go for work, the battery life, it's not there. You're gonna get three to four hours max out of the battery life. Um, I took it to a board meeting, a meeting that I had to go to. It lasted uh, all day, it was an all day meeting. And about three hours in, I had to plug it in. It was just getting, it was getting low on battery. We were working on some, you know, very important stuff. And so I had to plug it in. I had to go find, move from my seat, find a place to plug it in and recharge the battery. And so it's not going to be something you want to do with that, that you can actually do that with. You're not going to get all day battery life out of this thing. Using it as a desktop, it does quite well. So as a desktop replacement, um, is it loud? Yes, absolutely it is loud. Does it have a lot of heat? Yes, absolutely. You know what else had a, hot, a lot of heat? An FX8350. And I rocked one of them bad boys for a long time and I wasn't backing down off that hill because I was like AMD, you know, and it was, it was a space heater is what it was. I didn't have to turn on the heat in the winter because my computer put out so much and it was so loud. And so if you got some noise canceling headphones, you can get past the noise that this thing puts out. And using it as a desktop replacement really isn't that bad as long as you've got an external monitor, keyboard, and mouse. Um, <clears throat> and so I actually enjoyed using it for that, except for in meetings. If I was in meetings, it would, the fans would kick up. And so, you know, it could be a little bit aggravating to the people when I was trying to talk. Um, you know, if you're in Zoom or something, uh, with a high quality mic, if you didn't have uh, noise suppression turned on, you're gonna be able to hear it. And so in meetings, it was a little bit, you know, iffy. Uh, however, using it as a desktop, other than that though, it was, it was a great experience. It had the power that was needed. Um, it was portable if I ever needed to take it anywhere. And it got the job done. Not only that, it comes with a great warranty. And I really think that that's kind of the kicker in this scenario is yes, you can get something that's lighter and you know has a better screen from Razer or Asus or MSI. However, when you do purchase this Dell, you're getting an excellent warranty. And for a lot of people, that means a lot. It means a lot to me. Um, you know, if something on this breaks, I call up Dell, they're either gonna take it back and send me a new one or they're gonna send somebody out the next day depending on which service plan you have, and they're gonna fix it for you. And you can get, you know, I think it's like five years or something uh, with the warranty. It's not super expensive, it, it is, you know, it's, it's expensive, I think it's like 350 bucks for four years or something. But having that peace of mind, knowing that if it ever goes down, it will be repaired and there's not gonna be a whole lot of fuss about it. Um, and so knowing that Dell has great customer support and a great warranty really plays a huge part into buying this machine. Behind me, it's actually over here. And so when we come down to the brass tacks, of it, would I recommend it? Yes, I would recommend it if you're looking for a desktop replacement and you're not looking for something that you can lug around. If you are in the, the market for a desktop replacement that's got the power that you can do, you know, developing on content creation with an external monitor that you can do uh, you know, video editing, rendering, you know, like I said, content creation uh, and things of that nature and play games on, then yes, it, it's a great purchase. It really is. Um, QA is a little bit iffy sometimes. You, you're probably gonna have to do a repaste. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, I've got a video on how to do that. Dell will also replay, repaste it for you. Uh, and that's just, that just comes with the territory with buying one of these. Um, it is gonna get hot. The, the paste is gonna dry out and you're gonna have to have it replaced. Uh, it's just part of it. So when you go to make this decision on whether or not you want to buy, uh, you know, one of these Dell G5s, it should really be, do you have, do you have a desktop? Okay. Are you looking for a six pound gaming laptop? Uh, maybe not. If you're looking for a desktop replacement and you want it to take it on the go, then yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, it, it really is. Um, and so that's been this review. After six months after using this thing, you know, my impressions are still a little bit the same. Uh, it, it does 
it's a jack of all trades. It does a wide range of things. Um, you know, it can play games. You can do work on it. You can do content creation as long as you're able to invest in the external monitor that you need. You can do a lot of different things with it. And so even though it's loud, even though it gets hot, um, it still does have its value. Uh, I think right now you can actually buy one of these for around 11 or 1200 bucks. And so it's really not that bad. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, stay tuned for more videos. We've got some, you know, a lot of Raspberry Pi stuff coming up. You can watch my other laptop reviews. We've got MacBook Pro 16 coming up in the reviews. So there's going to be some really cool things happening here on the channel. Listen, y'all stay safe, and I'll see you later.